Hi everyone, welcome back. I am going through a kind of phase of reading books related to, generally speaking, statistics, data science, data analytics, um, maybe a little bit uh, even design. And the book I want to talk with you now in this video is a book titled Data Detective. Data Detective. The full title is Data Detective 10 Easy Rules to Make Sense of Statistics. And it is written by Tim Harford. Tim Harford, published last year, 2021. In general, I liked, uh, I liked the book. The author is a very skilled, uh, a very skilled writer. And the book is very entertaining. It has some issues, some very minor issues. But in general, I would recommend it if you, if you want a very general treatment of um, thinking with statistics, a general guide with reference to the big picture. It's not a technical book. So let me read my review with you. And um, I might occasionally pause and add extra, extra notes. All right, so Tim Harford's 2021 book, Data Detective, is not really about statistical methods. So if you want to learn about statistical methods, this is not the book. This book has a much broader scope and it is less technical than a book on methods. So it deals with knowledge in general, our relationship with knowledge, the way we come to judgment, form judgments based on what we see, what we hear. And so in general, the factors that determine uh, our relationship with knowledge, both as individuals and as collectives, as groups, societies, like a scientific society. Uh, but not only that, it could be other kinds of societies. Um, the book is very well written, as I already said. You get a sense that Harford has written the text slowly and patiently based on how well the elements within each chapter are synthesized into a coherent product. So there are different elements in, in each chapter. That some of them are anecdotal, some of them are historical, some of them are about findings, agencies, and there's a real synthesis between those different elements in each chapter. The quality of writing makes the book engaging, entertaining, and light. Even if you're tired it's at the end of the day, evening, uh, you sit and it's, it's that kind of light reading. Uh, it doesn't demand too much because the, uh, the writing is good. And um, the light and entertaining writing almost makes us forget that the author's intention is to educate us about the value of statistical or scientific reasoning. Um, so yeah, that's, it might sound, you know, I, I'm pausing here, I'm not reading now the, my written commentary, but it might remind us a little bit of uh, that old-fashioned proponents of enlightenment. You know, it might seem a little bit outdated for that reason. The way he defends science as, um, I, I'm not using his words, but the way he defends science and statistical reasoning and evidence-based reasoning as a kind of savior. Uh, and he kind of charges it with, with some kind of semi-religious uh, value. <laughs> that seems, it, it seems a little bit old fashioned to me. So that enli enlightenment project, even though he does that much better than authors like Steven Pinker, but it is still has that, to me, that, that old fashioned outdated flavor. But if you want to read a book in that style, with that approach, a pro-enlightenment, approach in our age, uh, this is probably one of the good choices you can go, you can, you can pick. All right, so back to my writing. Each chapter combines, um, on the one hand, conceptual and statistical principles, uh, which you can also refer to as the outer view, the distant view, the bird's eye view, and on the other hand, the personal anecdotal elements, or you can also describe those latter elements as the inner view, or the warm's eye view warm's eye as opposed to the bird's eye. The 10 principles in the book, uh, each are examined in a separate chapter, uh, are brought to life with interesting, very interesting examples, ranging from art forgery to politics and uh, the biographical facts about interesting economists and so forth. So these are 10 principles uh, from one to 10. Uh, they are one, search your feelings. Two, ponder your personal experience. Three, avoid premature enumeration. Four, 
Step back and enjoy the view. 5. Get the backstory. 6. Ask who is missing. 7. Demand tra transparency when the computer says no. 8. Don't take statistical bedrocks for granted. 9. Remember that misinformation can be beautiful too. And 10. Keep an open mind. The 10 uh, chapters are followed by a final chapter titled The Golden Rule. So the 10 commandments are followed by the golden rule. And the golden rule of Harvard is be curious. It doesn't say much about how we can get curious, where curiosity comes from exactly. He does say a few things, but I was unconvinced by his treatment of curiosity in general. He talked about the, the illusion of explanatory depth. Uh, but yeah, no, <laughs> I would have wanted to read more about curiosity. That golden rule just seems too easy, too good to be true, the way he handled it. Now, I want to talk about the main theme of the book. Harvard's general stance regarding the, the value of statistics is described with reference to the, posi the position of somebody else uh, by the name Daryl Huff. Daryl Huff is the author of the 1954 book, How to Lie with Statistics. So there is that huff harford polarity, opposition, which is very useful because that polarity is laid out. It helps us organize the rest of the book. So the huff harford polarity is a theme we could think about until the end of the book because the theme goes through different variations throughout the chapters. In chapter one, the central theme takes the form of a polarity between, on the one hand, unexamined feelings and on the other hand, careful reasoning, when we don't just feel, but take our feeling into account. That doesn't necessarily mean going against our feelings. It just means exam an examination of everything, including our own emotional responses. In chapters two and three, we turn to the tension between naive realism and scientific thinking. So that's another way, another manifestation of the huff harford polarity. In chapters Four to six, we distinguish two types of evidence. One, uh, what is readily available, the evidence that is readily available. And two, the evidence that is initially hidden from us, initially hidden from our view, but is equally relevant. So thinking about evidence, not in terms of what is relevant, what is irrelevant, but in terms of what is relatively more obvious and what is relatively less obvious, what requires more effort to bring to to our view. It's not the first time we are reading about this topic, Kahneman, Tversky, they discussed availability of, um, of evidence too, but Harford just writes about these topics in a very fun, engaging way. So it's, it's worth reading. Uh, in chapters seven and eight, we read about the opposition between the aim of knowing and the forces that want to instrumentalize knowing, instrumentalize statistics and science, and maybe even overwhelm the our aims of knowing, our knowledge-oriented aims. And these forces are, they could be blind technological forces or they could be political forces. A leader, a political leader wanting to use statistical claims in a way that make, uh, make them look good. Finally, chapters 9 and 10 discuss the possible disharmony between our commitments to knowledge and our tendency to be swayed by aesthetic-driven or identity-driven dispositions. So we have commitment to no facts of the matter, no what is the case, commitment to true, true things, to truth uh, on the one hand, but we also have other commitments like wanting to protect and have a identity, identify ourselves as being on the right side of an, of an issue. And that could sometimes be in opposition to uh, our commitment to knowledge. Same is true with our aesthetic taste. You know, sometimes we just want to look at a nice graph and be persuaded by that, and that is not necessarily a good thing. Um, perhaps the most important feature of Harford's writing is his optimism. His optimism is not annoying or out of touch because it is conditional, careful, and responsible. It is an optimism that knows it must be backed by sustained collective effort. He invites us to share his optimism as well as his responsibility to become more attentive to what we believe and how we believe, how we come to a given belief. To value curiosity and transparency and to not take for granted what has already been achieved by others, like very important agencies devoted to 
independent um, independent pr preservation and collection of statistical facts. Even if you disagree with his optimism, with Harford's optimism, you might still benefit from the book since his treatment of the 10 principles plus one, 10 plus one, the golden rule, um, his treatment of the 10 principles can be easily disentangled from this message of optimism and, and hope. So let me note once again that the book is not a technical treatment of statistics. It's more, it's maybe you can say it's meta statistics or it's a popular, uh, it's a treatment of epistemology for a popular audience. Um, so I would recommend it as a general accessible treatment of the foundations of statistics and the place of statistical scientific reasoning in larger social historical contexts. All right. And uh, on that note, I'm going to now go back to the library and return this copy <laughs> because it's due in two days, I think. All right. Thank you very much for listening. Um, and till next time.